Now let's move on to number 26 of our TRS ESA 2. How much power is saved by using J3E over A3E? Okay. Ano nga ulit yung A3E? A3E stands for A, particularly the A, that is the uh, type of modulation of the carrier. And that is double sideband, full carrier. Tama? And J3E is what? J in particular is single sideband I mean suppressed. Okay. <laughs> suppressed carrier. Okay. So, ano ang nawawala? Ito kasi buo eh. Big sabihin, yung carrier mo nandyan, then you have two sidebands. Yan. That is double sideband full carrier. While in J3E, you have single sideband. Tanggal na yung isa. At ito ay nasuppress na rin. Kaya ang makikita mo na lang ay isang sideband. So, ano ang natipid? Ang natipid natin ay the carrier power and the sideband power. That is letter C for number 26. Okay, next number. Number 27. Number 27, the letter designation. Uh, let me change this to a laser pointer. Wow, in the pit. The letter designation B8E is a form of modulation also known as, okay, also known as what? B stands for what? That stands for independent sideband emission. And that is letter, letter C. Now, when we say independent sideband emission, pagka A3E kasi ang ginamit natin, that is AM. We have two sidebands, correct? One and two. Pero, yung laman ng isa na sideband, which is of course the information, will be the same for the other sideband. Pareho lang sila. But in B8E, yung information mo dito ay iba kaysa sa information mo sa kabila. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya is independent sideband. In fact, 8 means dual channel. Dalawa yung channel niya. Whereas, if you are using 3, in this case, 3, halimba, 3 yung ginamit, ibig sabihin niyan, single channel lang siya. So, ito dual channel for 8. Okay? That's why it's called independent because you have two different information on uh, one, on on two sidebands. Magkaiba sila ng information. Okay? Letter C for number 27. Now, let's go to number 20, 28. All right, 28. Nice lang ako ng konti. The OSI layer that deals with mechanical and electrical specification of the interface and transmission medium. Again, that's mechanical, electrical. Actually, kulang pa yan. Meron pa rin tayong functional specification. And for, for that, that is uh, known as what layer? That's the physical layer, letter A. Okay, number 28. 29, the OSI layer that deals with the syntax and semantics of the information exchange between two systems. Involved din ito sa translation. Involved din ito sa encryption. And involved din ito sa compression of the information to be exchanged on the other side, on the other end, or the destination. Ang tawag natin sa layer na ito ay, kung ang sagot nyo, transport, mali. Kung ang sagot mo, application, mali. Kung ang sagot mo, presentation ba, ang galing mo, letter C, ang tamang sagot. Alright, rock and roll. Number 30, question number 30. The series of pulses in which the timing of each pulse represents the amplitude of the information signal at a given time. Okay. Now, the key word here is the timing of each pulse. Parang uh, taba nung normal lang siguro yan. Okay. Timing of each pulse represents the amplitude of information signal at a given time. Now, obviously, nasa choices natin is pulse modulation. We have four. Pulse width, pulse code, pulse duration, and pulse position. Paano ba yung pulse modulation? Reviewin natin ng konti. Ang sabi natin, if we have an analog signal, and then the analog signal is sampled, okay, 
and then will be converted to one of the pulse modulation techniques. It will have a different approach for different techniques. Say we use the pulse width modulation. By the way, pulse width modulation is the same as the pulse duration modulation. So obviously, hindi na yan kaagad ang sagot. Tama? Kasi pareho sila eh. No? Isa lang naman yung tamang sagot dyan. But A and D will not be the correct answer. But for the pulse width modulation, whenever the amplitude of the sampled analog signal increases or it is high, the width of the pulse will also increase or will become high. But if the amplitude of the the analog signal is low, then the width will be thin or manipisha. Okay, and another name for pulse width modulation is pulse duration, or sometimes it is called pulse length modulation. Yeah, marami siyang pangalan. Okay, so ano yung tinutukoy niya na, na in which the timing of each pulse represents the amplitude of the information signal? Definitely not the pulse code modulation. Because the pulse code modulation will have uh, same timing, same width, same amplitude. It will be just 1 or 0. That is why your pulse code modulation, tinatawag na true digital pulse modulation. So obviously, the answer for this question is letter D, pulse position modulation, wherein the position of the pulse depends on the amplitude of the analog signal. Another uh, additional information is you can create pulse modulation uh, when pulse width modulation is first created, meaning yan yung kanyang requirement. Okay, that's number 30, letter D is the correct answer.